All right, to reach the first location, we are going to start from the giant glow tube that sticks up out of the water. And from here, we are going to head. We're going to head southwest until we reach the sparse reef pile. Now going here, you're going to want to bring a sea moth with a Mark II depth module at the very least, because you are going to be going into like a, like a cave area and the cave is a little bit deep. So you are going to want that and a flashlight and a sea glide, probably about all you need here. And like I said, like two seconds ago, there's no, there's no real threats here aside from the only thing that, that's here that can really damage you are the tiger plants, which are um, completely stationary and they're in the ground. They just shoot like little spines at you. But they're a hardly a threat, to be honest, as long as you're paying attention, so, yeah. All right, and we are now in the sparse reef. Now, once you're in the sparse reef, you're gonna see this like giant hole in the ground, sort of. It's a giant cave entrance, and this is the cave that you're gonna wanna go into, because in this cave, you're gonna find rubies all over the walls and on the floor. So we're gonna end down here. The rubies are relatively easy to see because they're like bright red, and this cave is pretty dark. So, good, but just like that. One right here, which I'm not gonna pick them all up. Yeah, there's one right there. One right there, one right there. So that's what, four, five, uh, six, seven. And there's another one right there. I think we're at eight. It's either eight or nine. Okay, well, I'm gonna say we're at nine because I just found another one. So we'll get nine. I'm gonna go up to 10 and then we're gonna go to the next spot. And ten. oh, there's our 10th one right there. All right, and to reach the next spot, we're about to start from the giant crow to the six up out of the water. Once again, I'm gonna use it for every spot. And from here, you are going to head about half of a notch to the left of north so you reach the underwater islands. Now going here, you're gonna to wanna to bring similar similar setup as you did for the last slide. You're gonna want a Seamoth with a Mark II depth module, but this time you're also gonna want perimeter defense on it. There are annoying creatures here. You're also gonna to wanna to bring a stasis rifle, a sea glide, and a flashlight. And if you have flares, you can also bring those because you can use them to distract creatures here. And let's talk about the creatures they're gonna run into here. So here you're gonna run into bone shark. Bone sharks are like small, they're like small aggressive creatures. They can they can destroy your sea moth pretty pretty quickly, especially because there's a lot of them here. So you just need to be careful of them. Make sure you don't shine any lights on them because that will draw their attention almost instantly. You can use perimeter defense against them if they're like all over you. You can also freeze them with your stasis rifle. And I just bumped into those fish on accident. You use the stasis rifle to freeze them, or you can throw a flare to distract. All right, now that we're here, you're gonna be looking for the rubies inside of these giant islands. Now, there's only some, I think there's only like three, three of these big old islands that have like little caves in them. They can go, what's the You can go onto the bottom and inside the caves is where you're gonna, okay, anyways, we're gonna go in these caves and in the caves, you will be able to find rubies. Yep, there's one right there. Another one right there. There's a third ruby, four, five, six, Space, we got seven, eight, nine. Let's find our tenth. There he is. Yep, ten. All right. All right. And to reach the very last spot, we are going to start from the giant crow tube one more time. And we are going to go, we're going to go about two, two and a half notches to the right of southwest until we reach the sea treaders path. All right. Now, going here, you're going to want to bring the same thing as you did for like the last two spots. So, you're going to want to bring a sea moth with a Mark II depth module and perimeter defense. You're also going to want to bring a knife and a sea glide you're not the stasis rifle isn't really going to be that useful here but you are going to want a knife and most certainly a sea glide for the one creature that you're going to run into here so the only thing that you'll run into in the sea treaders path are workers which can teleport you out of your sea moth or they can teleport you while you're just swimming around regularly so if they do teleport you you can either run away from them on a sea glide or you can attack them with a knife until they take enough damage to warp away and if you're fast enough you can hit them with perimeter defense on your sea moth and it'll make them teleport away instantly, but that's only if you're fast enough, so yeah.
right, a good sign you're going in the right direction is you'll see this giant wreck right here on your it'll be on your left so yeah this wreck is a good little landmark showing that you're going the right way you're on the right path so keep an eye out for that Uh, we're coming up on the sea charters path but i do want to mention that whenever you get to this sort of area when because you'll have the ground the ground's gonna be like right here and then it's gonna be like this big old don't you freaking teleport me there's gonna be this big old big old drop off and then there's gonna be nothing beneath you aside from this floor at the bottom so whenever you see this cliff drop off you're gonna go straight down right afterwards because if you keep going straight you're gonna end up in the void you do not you don't want to end up over there so it's very easy to go go like overshoot it and go past. So whenever the cliff starts to drop off like this, go straight down, and then you'll be right on the sea treader's path. Do not keep going. Do not continue forward because you will go into the void. Once you are down here, you'll see the sea treaders walking around, and then all you have to do is turn around, and then you're gonna go into the sea treaders sea treaders path cave, which is where the rubies are gonna be. See if I can find some. Oh, there's one right there. And another one right there. And three. There are some like tunnels. It's not just this giant cave. It's also like a bunch of mini caves in here as well. Like these, like these little tunnels. So make sure you go in these, explore these as well. And just like that, because there's rubies in these as well. That. Oh, uh, there's another one right there. What is that? Five. Oh, my inventory's a little. Oops. Six right there. Okay, nope. Six. Seven. Eight, and then nine. I'm gonna keep looking, keep looking, and that's ten right there. Now, granted, there's definitely you could definitely find more than ten rupees at each spot, but I just wanted to show like how many. Because there's a good amount of rupees you can find at every spot, and I just stop at ten for the majority of these spots. But you can definitely find more than ten at each of these spots if you keep looking thoroughly. Because I didn't look completely thorough. I just to give y'all a uh, a good idea. And that is all I have for y'all. I will see y'all in the next. Peace.